Welcome to the News Hour. Tonight, here at the Democratic National Convention, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz will accept his party's nomination to be vice president and introduce himself to the American people. Last night, it was former President Barack Obama and former First Lady Michelle Obama who were center stage, energizing the convention crowd and delivering scathing criticisms of former President Donald Trump's campaign and presidency. White House correspondent Laura Barone Lopez joins us now from the convention floor, where she's been watching it all. That's right, Jeff and Omna. The former president threw his weight behind Harris's nomination last night, telling the packed arena here that the Harris Walls ticket is ultimately the only choice. With back to back speeches that lit up the arena, Barack and Michelle Obama delivered a political one two punch. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling fired up. I am feeling ready to go. Firing up the crowd for Kamala Harris and warning of a Trump presidency. We have seen that movie before, and we all know that the sequel is usually worse. A familiar feeling that's been buried too deep for far too long. You know what I'm talking about. It's the contagious power of hope. The former president and first lady captivated Democrats with a message of hope. Mr. Obama compared the enthusiasm for Harris to his rise 16 years ago. I am feeling hopeful. Because this convention has always been pretty good to kids with funny names who believe in a country where anything is possible. But the Obamas also took the fight directly to Trump, repeatedly calling attention to his privileged background. Most of us will never be afforded the grace of failing forward. We will never benefit from the affirmative action of generational wealth. Here's a 78-year-old billionaire who has not stopped whining about his problems since he rode down his golden escalator nine years ago. And this scathing response to Trump's racist birther conspiracy theory that he continues to peddle. For years, Donald Trump did everything in his power to try to make people fear us. See, his, his limited, narrow view of the world made him feel threatened by the existence of two hardworking, highly educated, successful people who happen to be black. For Michelle Obama in particular, who said Ooh, this on the like convention cool. stage in 2016. No, our motto is, when they go low, we go high. Her tone last night was different. At one point, firing back at Trump's remarks, Michelle falsely Obama claiming that undocumented immigrants you know, are taking, quote, black something. jobs. Who's going to tell him that the job he's currently seeking might just be one of those black jobs? Do we believe in the promise of America? And are we ready to fight for it? Vice President Harris wasn't in the audience at the convention like she was on night one. This is not just about us versus Donald Trump. This is about two very different visions for our nation. Taking a quick trip to Milwaukee, Wisconsin with her running mate, Tim Walls, campaigning in the exact place Trump accepted his party's nomination back in July. We are here tonight to officially Well, Democrats held a symbolic roll call to celebrate her nomination. California, we proudly cast our 482 votes for the next president, Kamala Harris. Harris beamed in on the jumbotron. And returning to Chicago, she watched her husband's speech from aboard Air Force Two. It was second gentleman Doug yeah. Emhoff who showed the convention That's crowd the I personal died. side of Kamala Harris. I got Kamala's voicemail, and I just started rambling. <laughs> hey, it's Doug. <laughs> By the way, Kamala saved that voicemail, <laughs> and she makes me listen to it on every anniversary. Also last night, right alongside the party's most liberal leaders, like Senator Bernie Sanders, were Republicans who say they've had enough of Trump, 
and plan to vote for Harris, including Mesa, Arizona Mayor John Giles. I'm a lifelong Republican. So I feel a little out of place tonight, but I feel more at home here than in today's Republican Party. John McCain's Republican Party is gone, and we don't owe a damn thing to what's been left behind. Even former Trump press secretary Stephanie Grisham spoke out against her former boss. Behind closed doors, Trump mocks his supporters. He calls them basement dwellers. On a hospital visit one time when people were dying in the ICU, he was mad that the cameras were not watching him. As for Trump, he held his first outdoor event since his assassination attempt, a campaign stop alongside his running mate, J.D. Vance, that was pegged as one on national security in Asheboro, North Carolina, but again, heavily featured insults against the vice president. She's a radical left believer. She ruined San Francisco. She ruined California. And if, if she gets in, our country doesn't have a chance. This calamity is on comrade Kamala Harris's shoulders. Back in Chicago, the center stage tonight belongs to vice presidential nominee Tim Walls, who many voters still know very little about. 